on it. Yeah. If you hunt long enough, you're going to encounter some amazing animals, and some of them may be deer that you will never forget. And the deer we're about to show you definitely qualifies for one of those bucks, and we call him Bigfoot. I'm just gonna get right into it. I've already seen this buck a bunch of times in the summer. I watched him from when he first got out past his ears all the way up to this point. But for the sake of the time on YouTube, I'm gonna get right into the story here. And this is only a couple weeks before bow season will open, so this is where we're gonna start the story. Yeah, but you ain't seeing what he's got. God, it's friendly. Look at the points, oh my gosh. Man, he's got like five or six on his base. Is he really? Yeah, he's got one, two, three. Three on his base on the left side. Four, one, two, three on the left. One, two, three, four, five stickers on the right on the base. Wow. I'd say look at him with the binoculars, Randy. Split row tines on the left. Car coming down. See all the points? Oh, he's got a bunch of them off his base. I know he does. Then he's got that one on the right side. It'd be the five point side. In between his G2 and G3. See that one in between us? Yeah, he's got... I'd say he's closer to 20 points. Yeah. He's got a bunch of them on the bottom of his bases on the left. One, two, three, four, five on the base on the left. He's got one, two, three, four on the right. He's 160. Yeah. I say he's a mainframe 160 by 6 by 5. Look at that, my Randy. Side view. Jeez. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? It's a nice block. I can't believe he's doing this like this. Can you? Talk about some video. Wish I had my camera. Not a care in the world, Tom. Not a care in the world. I'm fogging up here. Wow, look at that. He knows. He's a flat buck. You're telling me that ain't an older buck? The size of a freaking head on him. You're not going by my camera, pal. You gotta go the other way. He's gonna come walk across the road. to throw that out there that deer on the right of Bigfoot is actually Hooker the year before I shot him so if you've never seen that video go and watch uh, the hunt for Hooker
See that, Jesse? Huh? You didn't see it flash? So every time that I went out to video this buck, he'd always start on one side of the road, cross the road into these big oak trees that were probably about 50 yards off the road, the big cornfield behind it. And that's when I decided I was going to hunt right there close to the road and I'd probably get a shot at him. Looks like I'm going to have about a 30 yard shot where I've been seeing the deer. I've been watching a real nice uh, 6x5 this summer and I've seen them uh, night before and then last night coming right up here by my stand. He's a real nice buck. I got trail camera pictures of him. Uh, lots of video of him. He's a buck. We're hung up in this uh, white oak patch here. We're pretty close to a road. We're 150 yards, 100 yards from the road. And uh, he's been coming out pretty early, so should get a shot at him tonight. Opening night of bow season in Wisconsin. Well, the deer started crossing the road just like I knew they would and the big six by five was with this group of bucks right here and just from my history um, i couldn't believe this was happening because i've never had any luck on opening weekend of bow season ever so i just kind of had that feeling that something might not work out Yeah, so you're probably wondering at this point why I haven't taken the shot yet. But I literally videoed this buck every single night, and he'd always end up right underneath the oak tree where I was at. And where he is here, he's probably 45 yards, if I remember right. And there was just no reason for me to take that shot. So I just thought any moment he'd come right into that tall grass and walk right underneath me. So at this point, you can see all the vehicles flying by in this spot. These deer are literally dodging these vehicles to get across the road out of their bedding area to come out to this hayfield to feed. 
And actually what ended up happening that night is I never got a shot at this buck. A car drove by, hit a nice buck crossing the road, made all kinds of racket there walking up and down the road and yelling and screaming and everything else. And you can hear him calling the cops and explaining the situation. And this big buck here that I was hunting and just froze up out into the hay field and was just staring at these people. It ended up getting dark out and we had to leave and I never did see this buck again this season. So now we're going to follow, follow the same buck into the next summer and I see him and I find him right in the exact same spot that he was this year. The big 6x5 from last year that I got all the videos of. Looks like he's got a split G3 now. Definitely gotta get my camera out here now. He's got six on his right right side, seven with the split G3, I guess. He's got stickers off his base again on the left side. Actually looks like he's going to have six on the left side too. Looks like he's going to have six on both sides plus that sticker. Or that split G3. Man, did we look for his sheds last year and we couldn't find them. He's a real visible buck. Seen him all summer. Had him come out open at night of both season. That's him. Six by six. Stick here is pretty stuff. I only had one encounter with Bigfoot during the hunting season, and it was in the same stand as the year before, but it was well after camera light and I couldn't get any footage of him. And that was it. I never seen him again that year or ever for that matter. What I do know is that his sheds were picked up that winter a couple miles away and that he was harvested the following year in November. He had 24 or 25 points when he was shot. Bigfoot engulfed my thoughts and dreams for two years and it was exciting watching such an amazing animal.